game of two quarters. The Bellarine probably dominating the first quarter and Casey doing dominating even more so in the second turn. As the ball is thrown up to signal the start of the second half, I tell you what, if the GFL game is starting at 2 o'clock, they might want to get a move on because it's 125 right now and I don't see that happening anytime soon. Finch around the corner on his left. A high kick. Oh, oh. gee. Dalhouse decided to try and run on with it and was caught immediately. Lucky to not get pinged. Play on cold. Now the ball at ground level. Over the top of it was Caldwell. Our man. And it's going to be a ball up. Umpire's wearing pink socks there, which will at least differentiate them for the next game. Doesn't help too much now, though. Ball absolutely belted by Coldwell, and it was a tough one to read for both players. Casey getting you win it out, looking towards Andrews. He did really well to take the mark overhead. Kicked a goal uh, late in the first quarter. His high kick. Ben said is there waiting for Bellarine. He did really well to take that mark. Uh, a great mark in defence, Ben said, throughout the year for Drysdale. His little chip in board to Baden Dodd, who goes a little bit of a run. Another chip kick. This time to Ben Lavars. Lavars goes long, penetrating, looking for uh, Jack Morfoot, who was turned around the corner by his man. And a kick around to Matt Lee for Casey Gadinia. Lee goes inside. Just signalling to hold things up there was his teammate. Who's now pointing, saying, lead there, that's where I want the ball to go. And it was a great kick, and it found Biscaya. In fact, it was Michael Collins, who turned around, kicked it on a point, oh. looking for the man of the moment, Mark Holt. The man who's probably uh, single-handedly got Casey into the lead with four goals by my count. Strength, this Gibbsy, match. just yeah. pure strength. You over saw how he moved him off the ball as well. Yeah, cash and... Big, not a small man by any means, but uh, just way too strong. Holt, big presence and uh, lining up for number five. They just put it on his head and he worked his opponent out from an early stage and was able to kick the ball right through the middle and Mark Holt is having a field day. So Casey, 9 3 57, extend their lead. Bellarine, 6 5 41. Mark Holt, uh, a known goal kicker during the uh, league season, but he's having a top day today. Other goal kickers for your interest so far, I've got Holt with five. Uh, singles to Jordan Andrews, Karen Baskaya, and Steve O'Brien for Casey Caninia. And then for Bellarine, two each to Tommy Boarding and Daniel Hovey, and singles to Benny Carmichael and Bradley King. Ball back up in the centre. Gage read it really well and tapped down to Smith. Who overran it but won his own footy and then was bumped off the footy and the, the Canadian player shoulder. has come off second best. And that's a lesson in bumping Kane Smith. You don't do that without hurting yourself. Smith goes to the inside out torpedo. Probably impeded there was more foot being held by his opponent. Just decided to spoil it towards the line. Case Canadian will happy to see it uh, over the boundary line. And it looks to be Jordan Andrews. He's holding his... Uh well, it might be a dead arm, I'm not sure, but yeah, as, as you said, he went to <laughs> off your screen. bump him off the ball. and um, He's coming off now. Nice aware. Definitely carrying that arm. Yep, it definitely looks like the shoulder might be a little bit out of place, and that's uh, a lesson for bumping Kane Smith. Josh Finch down there at ground level tried to dig the handball out from underneath. Instead, it's Casey who get their hands in the footy. Still no one can win a clean possession. Hole all over the top of it. Quick snap around the corner from Smith. Punched down by the Casey man. Now tracking it was Lehman for Casey. Again towards the boundary line. Morrison happy to see it over in front of the Ford advertising hoardings. Casey with a 16 point lead. And off your screen we can see uh, Andrews just trying to do some exercises and, and stretches to get that uh, shoulder back up to its level. Ball tossed in. Tapped at the top by Caldwell. But only to the advantage of Osborne for Casey. Carmichael met immediately. Smith pushed as he kicked off the footy. But it was a clever one to get it back in board. Just under the head of Holwell. Coldwell for Bellarine was affected by the tackler. And his kick went out in the full. So no score for Bellarine there. And just off the screen as well, Gibbsy. It looks like uh, Mark O'Donoghue's now got the job on big Mark Holt. Interesting change made there by the Bellarine co-coaches. As Casey work it towards their 450, Mark Holt is there, but this time it's heading towards Karimba Skaya, who's only kicked the one so far, but he's a, a presence up there in the 450. His little uh, tunnel sort of handball was met by Lee. And then Lee got it out to Painter, 
whose kick was smothered. Lavaz trying to track down the tackler. Couldn't do so. Kadinia moving across there, 450 through Wade. Put in a nice spot there for Fisher, who dished the hands off to Scanlon. Scanlon goes long. Holtz, uh, Mark was uh, spoiled rather. And the Bellamy can move it out there through Bell Warren, who's had a bit of the footy so far. Got it to Carmichael. And out to the far side. Bellamy can slow things down. They've got men on it in board, but generally it's a fair few one-on-one -on -one contests around the ground. So given that, he decides to go uh, back towards Devo Benstead. Might have even been Dark who got rid of the kick. Benstead to Tommy Lim. Lim's kick. It didn't even have to be precise, and it wasn't. But Gage made it look okay. Gage's little short one towards uh, Dale Kerr. They've got a spare man back uh, here, Casey Cadenia. So it could be interesting here to see when Bellerin attack. Dark was caught with the footy. And the ball just travels along ground level now. Casey Cadenia can work it on the rebound. Josh Tonner goes inside. And a strong mark oh. taken by Cormac Cashin. Very, very solid in the air. And he's done well to take that one in front of his opponent in Biscaya. That's twice he's uh, gone in front. Uh, in the air and he's um, contested really well. He spoiled the first one just uh, 30 seconds ago and then plucks that one. Well as a defender you've got to back yourself if you want to uh, go in front and really commit to the contest because you don't want it to fall over the back. Both times Cormac Cash has done very well. And Bellion have a chance now to attack. Overrunning the footy was King. Left it behind. Casey Cadinia on the rebound and trying to make him pay for that. Little hands from Jones. Got it through to Wade. Wade inside 50. Holt was oh. there. Cleaned up by Biscaya who hit the ground a little worse for wear. There's also another Bellarine man down. There might have been a clash of heads. It's O'Donoghue who's on the ground for Bellarine off your screen. It was certainly a big contest. It, it was. was four it was players big, yeah. that went really hard then. Four players in the contest. Biscaya, Holt, Cashin and O'Donoghue all getting involved uh, in that contest. And it was O'Donoghue and Biscaya who probably came off second best. Finch extracting from the pack. Did really well. He's been doing that for years in the BFL. A three-time Les Ash uh, medal winner. One of only two people to do that. Ball punched over the boundary line. We'll have a throw in about 50 metres out from Bellarine's goal. They still trail by 16 points. Seven and a half minutes gone in this third quarter. Ball will be tossed in. Caldwell did okay to tap it down towards Holwell. And then Carmichael just lurking. He's got a man free on the hands if he can get there. Hovey was pushed as he kicked. Ball's going to dribble through for a minor score. Hovey kicked the two goals in the first quarter when everything seemed to be going Bellarine's way. But since then, for the entire match, since quarter time, Bellarine have only managed the three behinds. It's a telling stat and one that might hurt them. But here's someone else who can hurt them. Dyson Bell Warren just pushed to the near side. He seemed to like it off the boot, but it must have drifted at the final moment. And Bellarine 6-7-43, trailing Casey 9-3-57. Bell Warren just the one behind to his name today. Casey working out through their defensive 50. It's a one-on-one -on -one of the big men, Gage and Jones, and Gage is all over Jones. Gave away the free kick, even if Jones may have taken the mark himself. He has a little option inside and decides to go there to Wade, who the 25-year-old from Taradon Dalmore has been pretty handy today, Matthew Wade, for Casey Cadinia. They moved out to that far side. The kick from Fisher was smothered and affected by the opponent, but it worked out okay. Back inside towards Scanlon, who goes along the line and a clever kick. It worked out that two on one contest was okay for Casey Gininia. Back inside, the hands from Collins were poor, which is unlike him. He's had a pretty good game today. Then putting his body in the line of uh, fire was Brad King for Geelong Amateur. He'll be happy to see a ball up. Uh, when he got stuck in down under King, the Ammo's man, a previous GFL player as, as Milky Marnie who was, who's breaking from us right now, uh, mentioned earlier. Ball just dribbling inside, Case getting his forward 50. Oh. Gage, <coughs> as a big man, he would have struggled to pick that up and said he took the hit and probably might have even copped one to the head there as well, so maybe some accidental uh, body contact. And one of the Casey Caninia players, uh, Biscay, I just wanted to to, yeah. to let him know. Went through him. It was a fair hit, but uh, certainly got him nicely. Gage seems to have recovered enough to get back in that ruck contest and goes up for it once more. Ball hits the deck and flies out the back. 
towards Gearin for Casey. Got the hands to Jones. Back across to his teammate who goes inside for a nice juggling mark taken by Ben Rag. Controlled it from the air to the ground. Only a couple of bites of the cherry. Did really well though in a, in a, what it was a, a two-on-one contest and, and came out on top. Well, Gibbsy, this is big. If he kicks this, um, it extends the lead even further for Casey. Points, yeah. And uh, it's getting to the stage for Ballerin where if they can't keep close enough uh, towards a three-quarter time siren, uh, it's real danger signs for them. So this is a big kick, a lot riding on it. There is a good point you make there, Josh. Missed he's it. pushed it, yeah. May have, even, may have even pushed it all the way. In fact, he's just stuck that in for a minor score. So Ben Rag, the one behind for him today. Another Nary Warren gun. Nary Warren, as I mentioned earlier, 10 players in the side today for a team that has won over 40 games in a row in the Casey Cadena <laughs> League. An insane stat. Smith kicks it out of Bellarine's defensive 50, but the Sharks can only watch as Casey Cadena repel. Fisher now sizes things op sizes his options oh. up, goes towards Holt, who was uh, spoiled in the marking contest, but has given the mark anyway. Was that for a free kick or was that perhaps because uh, he was a, a bit paid of both? Mark? He, he yeah. got a fair, fair chunk of it. He did anyway. But yeah, they're under severe pressure here, Ballerine. From the last ten minutes, uh, the start of this quarter have been all over them, Casey. Um, it's just been sustained pressure and intensity around the footy. And if Holt can uh, snag his sixth here, this will be huge. Holt lines up. Looks very good off the boot. The goal umpire needn't worry because Mark Holt has six big ones. One in the first, three in the second, two in the third. He's played a full three-quarter effort so far and will look to continue his form into the last term where Casey seem ever likely that they'll carry the lead as they currently... Uh, lead 10 4 64 to Bellerin 6 7 43. It's just that matter of Bellerin getting a goal just to get back into the match, just to get some momentum. I mean, the margin of, of 21 points is not insurmountable by any means, but it's just the fact that Bellerin haven't kicked one since the first quarter, which is probably what's holding them back right now. The ball hits the deck, and overrunning it was Matt Lee for Casey Cadinia. Umpire will call for a ball up. You'll find as a, as, a, as a player, I mean, out there, I'm sure the players will be thinking confidence-wise that the longer they go without kicking a goal, the less chance they feel like they have of winning this match, even if Casey don't add any more because it's just that pressure that starts to build up. Casey's defensive line has been really, really solid since quarter time. They've worked on it at that quarter time break and have come out firing. Oof. Here's Holt, 60 from goal, turns around on a point, Crack. goes towards Biscaya, straight out in front, the two Jukes. Holt made it way too easy for his teammate in Biscaya and did very, very well to put it out in front of his chest. The Ballerine defence gives here at sixes and sevens at the moment. Uh, the ball coming in is just superb um, from Casey. And uh, as we keep saying, the longer this goes on without Ballerine kicking a goal, the harder it becomes. Especially when Karim Biscaya can kick goals like that. A really, really well-worked attack from Casey. And now they tick into the 70s, uh, it just suddenly seems to look like a lot more of a convincing scoreline. It's Casey 11-4-70, Bellerine 6-7-43. And with that duo of Biscaya and Holt working to perfection, you have to wonder how, uh, admittedly, undermanned sort of Bellerine side can uh, hold down that promising forward attack. Well, in usual circumstances, you might even see uh, James Garvey and Matt Verfurth chuck a, a loose man back just to stop that potent force, but they, they need goals and they, yeah. they need men forward of the ball. I don't think they can afford to, to throw one back because a five-man forward line, especially mm. against what Casey Cadinia are currently running with, just wouldn't see any sort of penetration into that attack. Currently for Bellarine, there's Daniel Hovey uh, sitting at full forward. And Isaac, uh, sorry, Kane Smith, uh, rather hovering around that same position. But a two-man forward line won't do too much. In fact, they're all running up out of there now. So it's a completely open 450 in the Bellarine area. But the 450 we're concentrating on is Casey Caninia's one. Carmichael could have opted to kick around the corner, but instead just decided to see it towards the boundary line. He had Matthew Wade hot on his hammer. Four and a half minutes tick past at Simmons Stadium as the clouds sort of start to loom over what was. Initially a pretty sunny day, now it's a little bit colder out there at ground level. Casey 11-470, Bellarine 6-7-43.
They've got a very handy 27 point lead. The ball kicked around the corner. Umpire has picked out a free kick and he calls the advantage. Play on. Tom Lim gets one. He's going his way for once. Decides to take a bounce. Looks to go down the centre. There really is nothing to go to. Oh, the attempt from Brown was a good one. Just dropped out of his hands at the final moment. Ah. Smith tried to rise higher than his height and punch it, but he could not do so. Scanlon around the corner. Hanging at the back was Andrews. Seems to have recovered from his shoulder injury. Got the quick dish off to Rag. Benson did really well to pick it up. And then Andrews tried to do a little dribble kick on the ground. Again, it's absolutely panic stations down there in case he needs 450. Another quick hands out. Great tackle laid by Kane Smith. The umpire will be hoping for a little bit of respite here, and he will do so by calling for a ball up. Some frantic footy in there. Bellarine's defence did well to hold off potentially another Casey goal. They did really well then. They, they really had no right to defend that goal because they really should have kicked one in the end, Casey. They had players everywhere. They had a couple of free men, you're right. And there's another one, Biscay, although he had a man hot in his hammer as soon as he picked up the footy. Kerr hovering around it for Bellarine. The ball finally flies out the back. The kick from what looks like Carricker it was. Oh, and Caldwell back. was pushed in the back, and the umpire has got to give a free kick there, and he does so. Caldwell landed flat on his bum, was taken underneath by two players. Kick to he really doesn't have a lot. Instead decides to go across the ground and finds Ryan Dalhouse, whose impact has probably been limited since uh, quarter time. Goes to a three-on-one contest, basically. I mean, Fitch is a good player, but that was setting a task for anyone. Casey Cadinia working the 53 Collins. He has been an absolute ball magnet today. We mentioned at the start of the game we thought he'd do well. Oh, O'Donoghue, probably not his finest hour there, tapping the ball into the path of Holt, who was unlucky not to have cleaned up. Andrews, a snap around the corner. This will really hurt the Bellarine. And it's Jordan Andrews, whose innovative snap goal from 30 metres out extends Casey's lead to 33 points. There's a couple of bowed heads on the Bellarine side. They're lacking the confidence. They are wondering what to do, and even I can't tell you up here what Bellarine might be able to do. Well, it, it's worth noting, Matt, also that in the first quarter when Bellarine really had the majority of play, it was their it was their run, it was their carry that uh, got them through. But in these last two and a bit quarters, it, there's been nothing uh, for them, and they're really it was um, it was really obvious in that last play. Uh, their forward structure is completely broken down. There is. Uh, really nothing on. I think they really need to get back to what they were doing well, which is they really need to run it because uh, their forward targets don't look like marking the ball at the moment. Yeah, it's been lacking for Bar uh, Bar Nets, uh, Bellarine rather. They, as you mentioned, like we, they they have a very very short side in the sense that compared to Case Kidding, you probably have a few more solid bodies. Uh, Bellarine has some known runners in the team: Baden Dodd, Kane Smith, these sorts of guys. But they haven't been able to exploit that. Dyson Bell Warren as well, mm -hmm. James Dark. They've got a lot of players who can really run and carry with the footy. And although in the first quarter it seemed like Bellarine knew how to play this ground better, they probably do have about half the side who played here and played well a couple of years ago uh, against the team from South the South Australian border that escapes me right now. They did play quite well then, and it seemed like they were going to do quite well today as well, but Casey got in here since quarter time. They've hit back and they've done very well. A chance at Bellarine now as they eke towards their fourth fly. Can they do something? Ben said was there. Can line things up. Decides to go inside 450 to Isaac Baker who took it out in front of his eyes and has a chance to kick his first of the afternoon. And he hasn't done a whole lot today, Isaac, but he's probably had uh, limited opportunities considering the amount of ball that's gone to the Bellarine 450 over the last couple of quarters. But still, when the ball's down there, he probably hasn't made as much of an impact as he'd like. Baker, the new talkie recruit, he has to kick this and he does. The reaction sort of subdued from the Bellarine players, but they really need to get G'd up and ready to launch an assault in the last quarter as we edge ever closer to time on. 19 minutes have just ticked past. Bellarine 7-7-49, Casey 12-4-76. I was about to say before that uh, forward foray gives you that they really needed a spark, Bellarine. They needed something to happen for them to just get them, as you said, to get some momentum back into the game. And Baker's provided that for them. And they, for the last, oh, I don't know, eight minutes or so, they... Uh, they really need to carry this on and uh, a couple more goals will be handy for Bar Rangers for the uh, fourth quarter. Very correct. Ball tossed up. Balding was there. Lurking at ground level was Lehman. It's Casey Cadini who worked in there for through Tonner. Oh. He's had a fair bit of the footy as well. Holt was lurking. Pescaya was lurking. Back of the pack. Grab Rag might have been grabbed without it. It's Kerr for Bellarine who gets it towards his teammate, his Anglesey teammate in Dyson Bell Warren. 
And then Kerr was wrapped up immediately by a Casey Cunningham player. Finch bumped off the footy. A kick in board from O'Brien. Hole is lurking. He'll crash into the back of uh, Cormac Cash. In fact, it was Tom Lim. And it touched on the line. I think that's got to be touching the line. No, sorry. The players are celebrating. And it was some goal kicked by Matt Lee, I believe it might have been. Yep. Who kicked a superb goal. And for all of Bellarine's good work in getting that goal back through Baker, Casey have undone it straight away. Yeah, and, and Mark Holt, he, uh, Lee can really thank Holt for that one because it's uh, not just his presenting and his goal kicking, of course, that uh, is so valuable for Casey. The way he crashed that pack when it was a two on one, and the way he crashed it, brought it to ground for Lee. Um, it's what your, your big forwards are uh, really there for, so it was great work by him. We could see it coming too. We could see that collision uh, just happening at any moment, and Tom Lim did well to withstand the pressure, but Holt's uh, body presence was too strong. Casey looked to move it again. They went backwards from the centre bounce, but got it to O'Brien. It was a clever move. O'Brien's little kick got it to a teammate, and then Biscay was there trying to take the mark. Had a couple of bites of the cherry, but ended up dropping it. Quick hands from Cashin. King. Smith. Goes down the line. Carricker looked to handball instead. He's got a couple of running men down this near side. The kick was poor. It just picked out a Casey player who looks like Kane Biscay. Had three men on the wing then, and. Uh, burnt them all. It was an interesting decision from Carragher. Probably not uh, the best of choices, especially Bell Warren, who was there and had the pace to burn. Three men, almost free, running down this near wing. Instead, it's rebound. Although that kick from Dominic Painter was certainly errant and out in the full by some way. So Bell have the chance to reload. Looks to be Kerr again. Defensive 50, right in the corner. He's got absolutely no one to go to. The umpires decided to call play on. Curtis loads up in hope. Oh. The Case Gadinia players spoil each other. Not a lot of talk happening out there. Balding dished the hands out to his lookalike in King, who got it to Carrico, who got it to Finch. Final little bit of running. Hovey dished the hands. Carmichael immediately upended by Brown. And Casey did really well to stop that from heading inside their defensive 50. Now it's Tonner. His kick was okay. The ball was unkind. A bounce for Benstead. Went to ground level. Ben said couldn't keep his feet. Neither could the case get into the opponent, but he got up quicker. Got the hands out. Now the ball's inside towards Holt. Biscaya. Holt taps it over the back. Oh. Can't pick up the footy. O'Donoghue has to do really well here. He wants the goal line, and he'll get the goal line. O'Donoghue rushes it over the boundary line. Boundary line, free rather the goal line. In fact, he's going to pay a free kick for holding the man. I thought they were probably both holding each other, but instead the umpire has picked it out. Infringed against Mark Holt. O'Donoghue kicks to his ammo's teammate in Baden Dodd, who also links up with another ammo in Brad King. The ammo's with oh. the highest representation in today's Bellarine Football League interleague side, but that was very, very poor from the Sharks. And it's almost like they failed to man up when Case Canadian got the turnover, made it easier for them to get it towards uh, a player in O'Brien, I believe who's got the shot now from 40 metres out directly in front. Didn't even prevent a kick from a slider angle. It's just a basic skill er it is. error from, uh, from Brad King. It was just a, a mung of a kick. And unexpected from him too. O'Brien really puts his boot behind it, uh, but he's pushed it to the far side. A minor score for Steve O'Brien, who has one goal, one to his name today. The man at the moment in front of the sticks is obviously Mark Holt with six majors. And he's contributed nearly half of his team score. Casey 13 5 83. Bellerin 7 7 49. I've nearly gone 24 minutes in this third term. Dancing around an opponent was Lavaz. Got it to Benstead, to Carmichael. Carmichael on his left. Goes long towards Baker. Just had to keep it out in front of him. Brought it to ground level. Players calling for a free kick, but the umpire decides to wheel things on and eventually pops out the back. Ben said's intercept mark was very good. He's always good at that on Saturdays, at cutting things off. He goes back towards Tom Lim. Takes the ball to centimetres before it hits the ground. Lim's kick was affected Smart. by the smother. Umpire calls play on. Carmichael, whose handball was almost pushed out by his opponent, got it to Finch. Finch back in board to Dalhouse. His little chip ah. kick was ineffectual and went straight to Fisher for Casey Gidinia. He got the hands off quickly to Biscaya, the other Biscaya, who plays in defensive 50. Got it to King, who tried to get it back to Fisher. 
Instead, Bellerin have a pot shot on goal. Hovey from a long way out just has to watch as it dribbles towards the line. And Morrison will be happy to take that one over the line. We'll credit that one to Daniel Hovey as a behind. He has two goals, two for the afternoon. Casey Gidinia wastes no time in getting out of the defensive 50. And finding Matt Lee, a recent goal kicker, on that defensive 50 line. Belron stands the mark and then runs towards him as he's told to play on. Lim's there in the contest and did really well against someone like, a lot taller than him. Was unlucky to probably not take the mark and still scragging to fight the footy. Tom Lim in there, met immediately by Michael Collins. Well, you and see, we'll have another uh, ball up. Ben Lavar's just dropped about 20 metres off this contest in the middle of the ground, waiting for that quick kick out from Casey. It's good positioning. We'll just see if it gets to him here. It is. But just as he's on his own, that means so is the Casey Kadinia player. And it worked out well for them. Collins goes long with a booming kick oh. and a really nice take from Biscaya. On his own there looks to be Andrews in the centre. And he nearly dropped the mark. He nearly made a meal of it. But Jordan Andrews shouldn't have been left alone. It looks like it's Benstead jogging back to take the mark. And uh, mark his spot. But was that, was that Benstead's man? It may, it may have been. You don't leave someone as dangerous as Jordan Andrews on his own. He's already kicked two goals today. The 21-year-old from Berwick. And he will load up from about 40 metres to kick Casey's 14th if he can put it through the big sticks. And that he cannot. It looked good off the boot. And our commentators in the other room were certainly getting <laughs> excited about it as well, as they have been all day. More of a subdued bunch at Football Geelong we are. Only a minor score for Casey. 13-684. Bellerin 7-850. 34 points. Not an insurmountable margin, but... A challenging one nonetheless, considering the way this game has gone. Well, Umpire calls play on. play on for what seemed to be a legitimate mark by Dalhouse. The ball eventually got to Lavaz and then Dodd, and then Curse spilled what should have been a regulation mark. A quick kick around the corner from uh, Painter. Got it out to Gearin, and Gearin snaps around the corner with ease. Didn't have any players within two metres of him, and almost laconically put it through the middle. For a 40-point margin, and you could just about write home on this Casey victory now, I reckon. Well, you just saw there with the kick quick in from the boundary towards uh, Holt. Uh, O'Donoghue just com completely lost touch. He was playing in front, and he had no idea um, where Holt or which way he was going. Yeah. And as a defender, that's um, that's almost a cardinal sin, and he completely lost touch. And Holt, there's a nice uh, pick up on the half volley, who dished it off for another goal. And uh, this is almost getting to the point of no return for Bell right now. It'll be interesting to see uh, what sort of motivation comes out of the three-quarter time break because obviously this is interleague and with the team situated 13th and 14th, it's not like the GFL situation where you're playing off to be the best team in the country. It's looked like Cash and Cop one high. He probably should have been uh, rewarded a freaky against him Holt. for holding the ball. And there's Holt who comes out right on the siren and takes a superb grab on his chest. But as I was saying, I mean, the motivation for Bellerin to actually come out and rake a, make a real fist of it in the last quarter is probably not there, considering they've had a couple of guys that have picked up a little niggles. That's, that's the sort of curse of interleague is that you can uh, get some injuries when you come and play in that off week between the season. Here's Holt lining up. Everyone's on the ground anyway. No one really matters. But Holt has added his seventh goal to make it his third for the third quarter. Three in the second and two in the first. One in the first, rather. Holt has had a superb game. That's his deserved eight-goal lead so far. Umpire signals and the siren goes. So the ball will be tossed up in the middle for the final term. It'll be Gage up against Gaines. And it's Casey Cadinia who win the advantage. A quick hand from Lehman. Out to his teammate. Got the one-two back. Lehman darting around a couple. Got it to Tonner. Those two working in great succession. Out to Rag. Rag lines things up from 40. That would be some start to the quarter. Instead he's sprayed the kick and it goes out of bounds in the full. Benstead wastes no time in getting it back inside to Smith. Had one option, decided to go to the other. Pushes out to that far side towards Bell Warren. Dishes the little hands inside to a teammate who goes long towards Caldwell. It was a one on two, not the greatest of ideas. Tackle when he got the footy immediately was Biscaya, Kane Biscaya, number 19. And then Bellerin can reload. Carmichael with the shoulder strapped on that lovely left foot of his towards Finch, who handballs in towards Lavars. Back to Caldwell. 
Back to Finch, back to Smith. They're working through this handball chain, Bellarine. And now to Dark. Probably hasn't seen as much of it as he'd liked, but he's been on the bench a fair bit today. Dark loads up and puts it out in front of Caldwell. The ball just bounced off his chest and Lim could only watch as it sailed over the boundary line. It was, good. It was a decent kick from Dark. Probably could have put a, maybe a metre more of, of oomph on it to get it on Colbell's chest, but it was hard for the, the gangly big man, as we know him, to take that ball at ground level. He did well there, though, to tap it straight to Finch. He may have copped a high one. Colbell picked up his own footy again, got little hands out. Just bustling his way through was O'Brien for Casey Gidinia. And then tackled as he kicked was uh, Fisher for the Demons. The kick was certainly affected by the Carmichael challenge. And we'll have another ball up. Only two minutes gone. Well, for Ballarat and Gibson, I think what they've got to do is just got to run. Run and carry through the middle of the ground as they did in that little passage of play there. Roll their the dice. Their forwards haven't uh, clunked many marks today. It really hasn't worked after quarter time. They've just got to try and run and gun it. Josh Finch goes inside 50. Balling nearly worked his man off in the one-on-one -on -one contest. But his opponent was too strong. And Case Cadinia worked out their defensive 50. Ball bounced off the hands of Fisher. And then went straight down to his teammate who went along the line looking for Andrews, who's been pretty handy today. Instead, spoiled by Baden Dodd. And we'll have a throw in. Near side of the ground. Ball will be tossed back in. It's Gage up against Gaines. Gage takes front position and tapped it down towards Finch. But instead, it trickled towards the boundary line. Finch kept, did well to keep it in. And then dragged it back underneath him was Gaines. Finch uh, almost begging for a free kick. The umpire said nothing doing. And we'll have to need another ball up. Casey still maintaining that 46 point margin and one that looks ever more insurmountable as the time ticks on. Gage's tap to Finch was effective. Got the ball almost knocked out of him basketball style. Managed to regain it once more. Got the hands to Lavaz, who got it back to Gage. And then Holwell got in underneath and was awarded with the free kick after Wade just jumped all over him. Holwell, little hands to Finch. An up and under kick to Lim, who made it look good. Lim, dish to Lavaz. Lavaz inside 450. Boarding did really well to take it at ground level, then pirouetted out of the tackle. Had the ball dispossessed. Umpire called play on, then laid a very, very good tackle on Morrison for Casey Gidinia. Wade was there to clean up. Wade got it to Fisher, whose nice kick out towards that far side. Found Collins. Went back in board to Tonner. Tonna to Morrison. They're linking up. The umpire has decided to pay holding the ball. Wants to call the advantage, but he really should bring it back. There's no advantage there, umpire. Well, Give it to Bradley King. Sorry, uh, Gibbsy. Balrond have had two really good opportunities uh, with Dark's kick uh, into the middle and then that opportunity just there, and they haven't made uh, anything of it. And they've really got to do that because uh, this margin will get a bit dangerous if we go any longer. It will. Smith's kick really set it up for Caldwell. Probably doesn't have the body strength throughout his court to knock off his opponent. Balding, trying to dance around his opponent. Did really well to put it up towards Hovey, who marked and just floated back into that pack. Did really well to use his strength. Hovey hasn't taken too many marks of late, so he'll appreciate the opportunity to line up from 30 metres out on a very, very minor angle and hopefully kick Bellarine's eighth goal of the match. They've only kicked six... In, they kicked six in that first quarter, only one since then. It's been somewhat of a drought. Hovey hits the post. And that probably about sums up Bellarine's day. So near yet so far. Hovey has two goals, three for the afternoon. The talisman from Bowen Heads. Casey Canini can move it, ah, excuse me, outside. Their defensive 50. And just slowing things up now. And why not? I mean, they've got the game on their turns, under their control. A kick to a big three-on-three -three contest. At the bottom of it was Lim. Play on call. Now it's Dal House for Bellarine. Boarding may have been affected in the contest. Was sort of pushed to the ground. Play on call. Then ragdolled off. It was dark. In underneath was Holwell. Again, play on call. A big punt from Tonner off the ground was intercepted. And then Dyson Bell Warren. Happy to just tap it over the boundary line and see it through for a throw in. Right where the 50 metre line meets the boundary line. Well, the Casey defence has been absolutely superb today. They've, they've held fort really well and they've been super, super strong after quarter time. And haven't they looked like being beaten? 
Exactly right. They've been G'd up by their coach and responded well to his requests. And they've done very, very well since quarter time. Really taking the game to their own in that third quarter. Lavar's called to play on. A really nice kick out in front of Ben Carmichael, who should have the legs to kick from 50. I would pull the man of the mark back a couple of metres. Come on. Carmichael decides to load up. He won't have the legs. Just goes for distance. Dark worked his man underneath it. A little toe poke from Tom Boarding. An inventive toe poke nonetheless. And he knows how to kick those clever goals. Tom Balding has his third, which makes him the highest goal kicker for Bellarine this afternoon. But he doesn't have too many to compete with, considering the Sharks only have eight goals for the entire match. 8-9, 57. Casey, 15-6, 96. Well, they're going small, Gibsy, uh, down forward, Bellarine. They've... Um, uh They've got Balding playing deepest now. They've got Hovey to push right up to the ground to give him that target to kick to uh, coming out of the back line. Uh, they've got Colwell to do the same. And then they've got Dark playing a little bit deeper uh, along with Benstead as well who's been uh, thrown forward. Seven minutes gone. Let's say there's 20, 21 minutes left. Do you think they still have the belief? Uh, yeah, they still have belief for sure. And if they can get the next one, uh, it'll really get them going. It will make things interesting, but still that margin at 39 points is obviously uh, a tough one to turn around. It's strange things have happened uh, in local footy and in the AFL, so it's not like this uh, without a precedent. But Casey Cadinia have certainly made it tough through their very strong second and third quarters. Ball tossed back in. Gage is being worked under it by his opponent in Kim Jones. And the high up under kick sets a task for Caldwell. Ben said read it really well off the pack. Dark turned around his man. Got it to Smith. Then finding a little bit of space was Holwell. Couldn't take the footy above his eyes. Got it to his Hawks teammate in Benstead. Who got it to Lim. Who got it to Balding. Who kicked a few goals lately. Balding goes for home and kicks another one. And Bellarine just have a little bit of spark. They trail now by less than six goals. And there might be something left for Bellarine. Tommy Balding is the man to kickstart that with his fourth goal of the afternoon. Well, it's working, uh, Gibbs, in those early stages, that smaller forward line. Uh, and we, we know how, uh, how clever and, uh, and smart Tommy Balding, uh, how smart he is. Um, he likes it at ground level. And he's yeah, lo loves it. As Milky said in that first half, he loves space and loves it at ground level. And uh, certainly see how high these half forwards and centre forward is pushing, leaving Balding isolated deep in the goal square. They may as well take some risks, Bellarine. And a couple of goals will certainly give them momentum to try and push for a few more. Dodd's tracking this one down, and so too Carriker with his opponent. They'll be happy to see it over the line, though. Ball to be thrown in. Nearly nine minutes gone. So still plenty of time if they're good enough, but it will take a very, very good effort now. Ball just grabbed out of the ruck from Collins, but he had no one to meet him. And then a quick handball, and it got through to Painter, who loaded it up, but hooked it a little bit too much. And let's Bellarine off the hook. That probably would have put the nail in the coffin. How do you kick that really dampen the spirits of Bellarine? Just put on two recently. Oh, the kick from full back wasn't great from O'Donoghue, it might have been. Cut off by the Case Gadinia man. Then put it out in front of Holt, who was really busting in that contest. Kerr did well to read off the pack. Got it to Carriker and then to Smith. And back to Carriker again, who kept running. He'll keep running again. Bradley King got it back inside. Colwell. In fact, Colwell's here now. He's got a look like out there somewhere. Dropped the mark and could only watch as his case get in here. Opponent put it straight out on the chest of Karen Baskaya, who has two majors for the afternoon, the Nary Warren big man, and will be looking to add a third. Well, that hurts, Gibbsy. Caldwell really should have uh, swallowed that mark in the middle of the ground. He's been good. He's presented well in this last quarter, playing that high sort of half forward role uh, for a big man, but really, if he takes that, it opens the whole ground up and they're away for another forward entry to keep that momentum, but as it is, um, Kenya just got the ball and uh, Biscara line up for number three. He starts at left, works it back. That is a routine if ever you saw one. Karen Biscaya kicks his third of the afternoon and just about puts the game to bed. Casey 16-7, 103. Bellarine 9-9, 63. 10.5 minutes gone. And we mentioned Ash Caldwell. Can't begrudge the man for his efforts. Uh, he's been pretty handy in, in providing that tall marking option, but the the letdown for him is that he wasn't able to mark probably as many as he'd like. Yeah, certainly able to mark that one. Uh, 
it's a cruel game. You, you uh, always get a second chance, but uh, as it is, Ballerain really, uh, if they get back in this game, it'll be something else. Umpire's plucked a free kick out of seemingly nowhere uh, from the centre bounce in Fridgeman. It was Jones who dished it, oh. hands off to his teammate in Ben King, and they worked it forward through O'Brien, oh. <laughs> out on front of Biscay, who was on all fours when he tried to take that grab and slipped out of his grasp. O'Donoghue got little hands and a little inventive scoop from Carriker. Lavaz basically handballed it to himself. Biscay throwing his weight around. Lavaz goes and gets his own footy again. That's one thing you know he'll be very good at is those second and third efforts. Coldwell, his kick was affected by the opponent. Gearan got it to Jones and back to King for Casey Gidinia. High up towards Biscay, lurking at the back of the pack. <laughs> It was the man wearing number 16 who doesn't feature in either our record or our team sheet. The Phantom Man. <laughs> His kick, thankfully, was out in the full so it doesn't go down on our records. Finch. A long kick towards Bell Warren. He timed it to perfection. Bell Warren would love to run, but he doesn't really have the space to do so. Instead, puts it out in front of Ben said. Oh, Bell Warren keeps on running. Now he's got room to move into. He's got a paddock. Takes two bounces. Will look to go for a third. Instead decides to load up from long range and was felled after he kicked. The umpire should pay a downfield free kick and does so. And of course, Tommy Balding put the hands up to receive that because he's been informed today. He's kicked four and will look for number five. To give the slightest chance of hope, we can't rule him out yet. But a 40-point margin with 12 minutes gone is just about there. It was a great run from Bell Warren. He, he dished it off and then he got it back. It was a good run. Uh, he got a bit lucky with that push in the back in the end because he, he was really... Uh Sorry, boys. I just got to interrupt. Tell me Balding wasn't even in that marking contest. And did you see him steal that? <laughs> yeah, he I stole know. that. Yeah, that wasn't was, his kick. That was Ash Caldwell's kick. <laughs> exactly. We, we were saying, I think Tommy Baldwell, sorry, sorry, Tommy Balding would love this because he's been on form all day. Unfortunately, he pushes that one to the near side. <laughs> he's, he would steal your wallet while you're having a shower. Don't worry about that. <laughs> he's gone over the line. Sorry? He's oh, he's, yeah, he's that's a, a goal square infringement. So we'll have a ball up on the on the tip of the square, and it'll be a yeah a ball up with uh, Bellarine trailing by 39 points. Ball up, Coldwell knocks it down, taken down, and trying to push was dark. Casey Caninia can move it out there defensive 50 now. As a crowd starts to build, there's barely a spare seat over on that far side of the Red Chickie stand, the lower level. Looking really good as people prepare for the GFL match that will come up soon after this. Stay live on the Football Geelong AFL Barn website. Bradley King got the hands out to his teammate in Kerr. A real hospital pass, tried to set a task for Finch. It wasn't the greatest of kicks. Tackled immediately was the man for uh, Casey Cadini, who we don't know who he is. Phantom. The Phantom Man. Finch got it out to Coldwell. Sorry, uh, Dalhouse rather. Back to Dalhouse in the 1 2. Goes across this far side. Ben said has it near the logo. Turns around his man in the corner. Dishes to Carmichael. Carmichael finds Dark on his own. Decides to run back inside towards the centre of the ground to get into his preferred right foot. Back out to Carmichael, who loves it on his left. Carmichael lines up and he's just pushing it. He wanted to curl back. He wanted to curl back, start it right, bended, 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 and then hit the post for a minor score. Bellerine, 9 goals, 11, 65. Casey, 16, 7, 103. We've gone 14 and a half minutes in this final term. Come up. There's the stat you've heard. Caldwell, intercept ah. mark. And he may have hit the post again. So that's three goals, nine now for Bellarine since quarter time. They just haven't been able to put on the scoreboard. And when they've had the opportunities, they haven't been accurate enough. Whereas, look up the other end. Mark Holt hasn't actually kicked a goal in this final term, but has been so effective throughout the match alongside his partner in crime, Karen Biscaya. Kidinia on that far side. Lurking at the back is Andrews. A two-on-two -two contest. The ball fell to ground level, just punted towards the boundary line by Wade. He'll be happy to see it go over the boundary line. As we edge ever close to the final siren, Casey 16-7, 103, Bellarine 9-12-66. It was a gallant effort up until about half time from the Bellarine Sharks, but since then, Casey have been too strong. Their midfield and defence have worked perfectly in tandem with the solid forward line, two-pronged attack of Biscaya and Holt. 
with uh, with Andrews uh, helping out in a cameo role. Down that far wing now, Balding worked underneath it by his opponent, and we didn't see that too often in the first half. But how things can change. Case getting to take it out to this near wing. Painter goes for a little bit of a run. A two-on-two -two contest presents. And the one wins out for Kadinia. Matt Lee did really well to take the grab. Put it to Scanlon. Scanlon goes and in the kick was weighed a little bit too much. He was probably caught in two minds. Didn't know whether he wanted to give it off to Cottrell or have a shot on goal himself. Instead, the ball just flies through the behind for a minor score, Nick Scanlon. Yet another Nary Warren man who's represented the club today in this interleague match. Bellion bring it out through that defensive 50. Little chip from oh. Kane Smith. That was a hospital pass. Cut off by the Casey Cadinia player. Quick snap around the corner from Wade to the hot spot. Did really well there, Cormac Cashin, to use his body as he does every Saturday. And took the mark. The kick wasn't the best, though. Really set a task for Josh Finch, who watches as the ball goes over the boundary line. Ball to be tossed in now. Presenting his gains to go up against uh, what looks like Morford in the ruck, who's having a little bit of a spell there. Finch was over near it. A quick kick from uh, Gaines again. Ball went to ground level. Now hovering around was O'Donoghue. Happy to see it towards the boundary line was Kaker and said decides to go for a little dash and just kicks it long towards the line. If that's not deliberate, then I'll go he. There is absolutely no one within 50 metres of his kick. And the other has pinged him, and that's probably yeah, a good decision. Fair enough. Casey Kadinia go back inside. Steve O'Brien has it now. In the centre square. A nice kick. Put it up in front of Gaines who dropped what probably should have been a regulation mark. Play on. A little chip one from Painter out in front of no one in particular. Holt just bounding down on that ball. Gets the hands inside. A quick run from Lee. Can go for home. He's pushed it to the near side. But that was good vision from Holt. He could have turned on a point and had a shot himself and said decided to give the hands to the running man in Lee. Who you'd think would put that through nine times out of ten. Instead he misses. So it's Kadinia 16-9-105. Bellarine 9-12-66. Carmichael finds Holwell in heaps of space. Dishes off to O'Donoghue, then lays the block and did well. Back to Carmichael, who hasn't stopped running all day. His hit put out in front of Lim, who's got two opponents to beat. Goes back to his teammate in Kerr. And then inside to Carmichael, who's picked up his third possession in this passage of play. Was wrapped up by a couple of opponents, and the umpire decided to pay a free kick. Going towards Matt Lee for Casey Cadinia. And now O'Brien has it. He's really racked up the possessions in the second half. Gets it out to Tonner. But the kick was cut off from Bradley King, who did well to just float through in that uh, centre-half back roll for Bellarine. A nice strong grab taken by Hovey. He's really pushed up into the defensive 50 almost. Uh, really pushed up the ground. Caldwell flies in the back. Benstead was there to read it from the full. Back to Caldwell and back to Finch who has no real options, decides to go for that one or two contest, really set a task for Baker, and Gaines could just float back and take the grab. Dishes off to Brown. His long penetrating left foot kick, bumped underneath it was Holt, play on call. Baden Dodd throwing his weight around, in fact it was Andrews who was bumped underneath. A quick kick from Dalhouse, finds Smith. Smith back in board. Bellerin can move, they've got the numbers. Holwell, might have copped one over the shoulder, play on call. Baker was pushed out of the contest. Balding trying to win at ground level. But Cadinia simply have too many numbers. Josh Tonner, who's had a mountain of footy in this second half, got it out to Lee. The two have combined very, very well. Lee told to play on because he moved off his line. Got the hands into Osborne. Osborne goes down that centre line. A three on one. And it was no match for Daniel Hovey, who just uh, darted back and took that mark. They're still going for it, Ballerine. I mean, they, they can't win, but it would have been easy for them in this last 10 to 15 to, to put the, the queue yeah. in the rack. Mm -hmm. um, but they're still going for it, which is just good to see, despite the fact that they can't get back into this game at all. They probably actually had the majority of possession in the last quarter, yep. which would be encouraging. It's just their kicking going forward and four goal has let them down in this second half, uh, which really cost them the game in the end. Lavaz goes inside 450, looking for Baker, went over his head, just deflected off his, uh, off his mitts. And then out to the Cadesi Cadinia player who got it through to Dominic Painter. He's handball over the top. Found a teammate who kept on running.
We haven't seen a lot of him today. Now to Wade. Wade inside, 450. Holt was there. Biscaya caught in two minds. Decided to chip around the corner. Holt can run onto this one. The ball was unkind. Was Holt turning around on a point. Holt kicks his eighth goal. And he has had a field day. Mark Holt should be rewarded with the best on ground medal. He's come from nowhere, the Cranbourne man, to kick number eight. He's first the final term, but as I mentioned before, he's kicked three in the third term, three in the second term, and one in the uh, first term. To have a true four-quarter performance, he's barely let up all day. He's done everything, Gibbs. He's really just, every time the ball has come down there, he has done something, whether it's uh, laying a block, uh, crashing a pack, taking a mark, or kicking a goal. He's just been utterly superb. It's been... Uh, a treat to watch him. Exactly. You look at those eight goals and you think, wow, he's had a great game. But even then, even the one percenters without having kicked the goals, without having taken the marks, has been really effective for the Casey Gardenia side. And that's probably led to their big margin now. They've got 17 9, 111 to Bellerine 9, 12, 66. Baden Dodd has plenty of pace and was able to outrun Andrews. And then a sweeping 20 metre handball to his Amos teammate in Lavaz. Back to Dodd. His little chip kick to Kerr was good. Kerr has Finch on inside. And if Dalhouse can run, he's there too. Finch decides to go back to uh, Smith, who was flattened after he gave off the handball. Caldwell, again caught in a one-on-two contest. We've seen that many times now. They seem to just go to him because he's the tallest man. But often he's caught out of position. Umpire picks out a free kick for a block and initially called the advantage, but then waved it back. 22 and a half gone. Can't be long left in this turn. Dark tried to spoil, but it was clever from O'Brien who kicked it off the ground. Put out to a one-on-one. -on -one. Dalhouse turned his man around really well. Got it to King and then got it back. Dalhouse with a little left foot chip along the wing. Ooh. Holwell might have had chop in the arms. Should have got a free kick. Eh? But the umpire will just decide to throw it in. In the end, a decent spoil from Ben King, the Nary Warren man. 45-point margin now for Casey. And there is the final siren. Casey Caninia Demons crowned 2014 AFL Victoria Country Championship winners over Bellarine Football League. And rightly so. 17-9, 111 to Bellarine, 9-12-66. We'll run through the goal kickers for you. Mark Holt finished with eight majors. Kareem Biscaya with three. Jordan Andrews with two. And singles to Gearan, O'Brien and Lee. And then for Bellarine, clearly the standout goal kicker was Tommy Balding with four majors. Daniel Hovey had two, both in the first quarter. And then Carricker, King and Isaac Baker all kicked one each. So repeating that final score for you, Casey, 17-9, 111, 45-point winners over Bellarine, 9-12, 66. We'll wrap it up here from Simmons Stadium for the Bellarine game. And we'll be back very soon with a new set of commentators for the GFL match joining you shortly. Thank you. Can read those. Yeah. Uh, who's getting the medal? I'm live to about three of their club rooms. So I've been told not to be too biased. I said, get stuffed. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. What do you got? You just, just do your own. So like GFL versus. No worries, have fun. GFL. GFL. It's not even up on the it's not even up on the screen, mate. I don't know how to do it up on the screen. Did you show up? Oh, you're too much of it. What's your name? Josh. We're going to ring Sean and Josh. Hey, ring Sean. What do you got? He'll explain to you over the phone how to do it. Why are you out, Does that come in any more space or is that just. I've got plenty of space at this end if you want to move. I'm not moving from here, but I'll move. This one's just shot. Don't stretch far.